Before we came out here, I had a chance to sit and visit with the panelists a little bit. A re there's a remarkable convergence between what all of them are doing with their lives and we're doing before the advent of what we in the West know as the Arab Spring and what we're focusing on, the empowerment of women and girls, developing sustainable societies, creating employment opportunities. So what I asked them to do to begin was in no particular order to talk about where we go now. So there's been this enormous political upheaval, but I think that it is unfortunate in a way that there's so little awareness in the West of the serious broad-based modernization efforts that had been underway, which is one reason I wanted Hani to talk first, before the political upheavals. So there's too much, uh, in my opinion, too much concern that, well, we've had all these changes, but the young people that wrought the changes aren't politically organized, therefore the people who are politically organized will come back and it'll be a victory of the past over the future. Now that could happen, but it's by no means certain. So I think all of you will have a better based on what they're doing and what they were doing before we all started thinking about it. First of all, thank you, Mr. President, for inviting me. I'm very honored to be a member of CGI, a new member. I learned a lot. I'm very honored to be speaking with uh, all my fellow panelists from different ex areas of expertise. I think that my generation is very powerful. We shouldn't be looked at as a threat, but as an opportunity. We're not problems to be solved. We're problem solvers. And this is what people need to focus at all over the world, just by listening. We know what are the problems. We know what's the solution. But how to get there is where international NGOs can help. Building civil society, it's a new concept for us. Building local NGOs to actually perform at their best, it's a new concept for us. So this is where I think the CGI community can help, building local NGOs, building civil society. I think we'll never go back to those ages where there's lack of freedom of speech, there's no economic opportunities, there's no political participation, and there's no equality rights between men and women. We'll never go back because the channels of communication are wide open. We're connected through social media. We're connected through just talking over the web. And there's no level of, of, of or lack of transparency in that area. And I think now it's, the question is how to move forward, how to build civil society, how to make those voices that gathered in social media, gather in reality, how to build institutions. This is how people in this room can help my young generation. Thank you. And what do you think the primary consequences will be of people like you and your generation in the next five years in Saudi Arabia? Well, there's revolutions and there's evolution. Saudi Arabia, um, I believe in evo evolution. My friends believe in evolution. Um, we're trying our best. To, there's a lot of reforms and revising policies, a lot of effort by the government. Um, but we're trying our best as NGOs and as civil society to come together and support those reforms. Um, for my generation, um, definitely there's a high rate of unemployment. I think there needs to be change of mindset for the younger people, that modest jobs is better than being unemployed. That's a problem, changing mindset. Revising policies that stand as walls for, for young people. So instead of opening a business, you have to go to this ministry, ask for a certain permit, go to another ministry, sign it. It's just a headache. And how to revise those policies and make it easier for young people to start their own businesses. And to believe in enterprise. This is the key solution. I'm a board member of Silatec. Uh, it's an organization for, uh, to help employ young people in the region, led by Sheikha Moza, the first lady of Qatar. Um, what Silatec 
There's the 100 million challenge. 100 million jobs need to be created by the year 2050 for young people. Now that's a big challenge and that's a big number. How do we get there? 60% of these 100 million jobs will be created by enterprise, micro, small and medium loans and enterprises. So if banks believe in those young people and the creativity and the passion they have and help them with loans, they will definitely have success story. I mean, there's this um, uh, uh, Heba, this uh, young Yemeni girl, and uh, Silatek helped open Al Amal Bank, which is a bank, first bank in Yemen to give uh, micro, small, and medium-sized uh, loans. She took a loan. She's married with two kids. She opened a small ice cream shop, very small, and she expanded. She took another loan. She paid her first loan off, and she paid her second loan. So that's a success story. And she says, I'm independent now. Somebody believed in me. And I am a part of this economy because I employed other young people in my shop right now. So this is how we can help young people, enterprise, and people here from, from the banking sector, the private sector, just by believing in our region, not look at it as a threat or there's a lot of uncertainty. The certain thing is that you have young people who are multilingual, who are connected to the world, who are globalized, and who have passion and can make it. And they need the banking sector, they need the private sector to believe in them. And they need governments to help them and make it easier for them to start their own businesses. Thank you. I wish I'd heard you speak when you advocated the right of women to drive. That was very impressive, what you said. But this is a big issue in Saudi Arabia. You know, they have, again, a lot of people don't know this, and uh, my friend Prince Turkey Faisal is here, who's my college classmate. We've been friends for more than 45 years now. So I've been, I always follow things very closely there. They had a serious modernization effort underway before the events in Cairo. And the, the king... Abdullah had built a university and the community there. They're building a lot of other new towns. But for several years now, there have been more women than men in institutions of higher education. And so now the big, to avoid what happened in the streets of Cairo, where they were continuing to produce a huge number, our next speaker will tell us exactly how many I've forgotten, of university graduates a year, nowhere near that many jobs, we have to accelerate the capacity of the women with university degrees to get access to credit, to move into jobs, to have employment. I was in uh, last year in Riyadh at a business, a small business forum where the most successful rapidly growing entrepreneurs were recognized and one of them was a woman who started her own business in Saudi Arabia and I knew they were going to make it because at the end of the recognition ceremony we all stood on steps like we were graduating from school. And the, guy, the men started high-fiving the woman who, run the, who won the award. And I thought, you know, we're going to be all right here. <laughs> but uh, I thank you. So t talk. Now we have about eight, ten minutes left. I don't want to take up any time. I want to give every one of you the same chance to answer the question I asked him. There are all kinds of people out here. If you could ask them to do one thing for the region, the future, and the people you care about, what would that one thing be? What do you want them to do? If you could get them to do anything. And where do you want them to do it? Listen. Just listen. Don't assume that there is one package fits all with the Arab region. Each country is different. Each nation is different. Each customs are different. So if you sit with young people, and you listen, they'll tell you, we need this, this and that. This is where we want to be. How can you help us get there? What we do at the Al-Walid Foundation, we listen. We sit with girls who are 16-year-olds in schools. I assume they want the same things I want. They completely blew me away. 
incredible minds, they stated the problems, poverty alleviation, women empowerment, uh, more women in, in the legal sector, more women in the labor sector, and they listed the solutions. But they just didn't know how to get their ideas into reality. There was no institution that believed in them and said, okay, we'll give you the tools to do so. And I think what NGOs can do here is to believe and to listen. And uh, Princess, I want to call on you, but to go back to what you said in the first place, that it's important that other people not presume that they know what needs to be done. It's the most important thing to do is listen. I think that there's a certain egocentric nature to the coverage I have seen. We worry about this election or that election or whether it'll come out in a way that's good or bad for us. The thing that really matters is whether it comes out in a way that's good or bad for this vast swath of young people that are coming into their own. And this has been very interesting. Go, go ahead, what were you going to say? If I may add to um, what Mukhtar said, uh, if we want stability in the region, people take their voices to the streets when they're not heard in the government. If we build civil society and institutions, people don't need to take their voices to the streets because these demands will be channeled through these institutions. If we want prosperity in the region, it's by developing the economy, giving hope by giving enterprises and believing in an enterprise. For me, if, if I had an institution when I was a middle class girl and I had so many Believe, uh, so many aspirations, so many dreams, but I didn't know how to channel them. Nobody came to me to help me channel them. This is exactly what I don't want for other girls like me out there. That's why NGOs must go to them, and we must actually help build local NGOs, and we must focus on civil society. Those are the two key solutions, civil society, and building local NGOs. Well, I think they were great, don't you? <laughs> Let me say, the most important thing, the most important thing to me, just listening to all this, whether you're asking for help um, in getting new investment for business or more for education or more for NGOs, that basically they're saying the rest of us should not presume to know what to do. We should help them figure out how to do what they want to do. Give people the tools, the mechanisms to answer that. And it's, it, this is typical whenever you have the breakdown of an old order, especially with a huge rush of young people. They need mechanisms, systems that will allow them to turn their intentions and hopes and dreams into real changes. What we think about what they should do is not nearly as important as whether we help them decide to do what they have already wanted to do. The how issue that I harp on all the time. The reason, of course, I, I do agree with all of them, they said in one way or the other, that's a far more likely strategy for those of us outside the region to produce a good political outcome for all of us than trying to cram our aid and our ideas and everything else through a predetermined notion of what the political outcome should be. Let people be free to pursue their own dreams and they'll come to the right place. And we will validate all those years you spent in prison. <laughs> God bless you all. You were great. Thank you so much. Roll video.